Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem partition labels. This is a very interesting and somewhat unique problem. We are given a string S and we want to partition the string into as many parts as possible so that each letter appears in at most one part. And what we want to return is the list of integers representing the size of each of these parts. So let's actually start with the second example this time because I think it really helps to illustrate how to solve this problem and kind of makes it simple. Just starting from left to right, let's take a look at the first character. It's an E character, right? We want to partition this into as many parts as possible, but each character, such as this E, can only appear in a single partition. So what we would want to do is just say, okay, cut it right here, right? This is a single partition. Great, but we can't do that. Why can't we do that? Because there's actually multiple E's in this string. There's another E all the way over here, and our partitions have to be contiguous. As soon as we see the first character and we see that it actually occurs way to the right in the string, we will never be able to partition the string here, 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 anywhere, right? Because at the very least, we know that this has to be one partition. And if we do partition it like that, this I think is nine characters, but we actually can't even partition it here either. And we can figure that out just by looking at the second character. The second character is a C. Now there's a C over here, there's another C over here, and that's perfectly fine, but the reason we can't partition here is because there's a C in the last position. Only by looking at the first two characters, we realize that the entire string uh, is gonna be a single partition. We can't partition this any further. And so what we're gonna return is we have a single partition and the length of that partition is 10. So this is the list that we are gonna return in this case. So you might be starting to get an idea of how we can solve this problem in general, but if not, don't worry about it because that's exactly what we're gonna talk about right now. So let's take a look at another example. In this case, we're given a string and the result is that we can split it into three partitions. The first partition is gonna be uh, nine characters, the next partition is gonna be seven characters, and then the last one's gonna be eight but let's try to figure out how we can arrive at that solution and how we can make it as efficient as possible. So let's take a look at this string and let's use the similar idea that we talked about in the previous example. So we look at the first character, it's an A. Now immediately, we know that we can't partition this at this point, right? This cannot be a partition if there are additional A characters somewhere in the string. And not only that, we could have multiple A characters, and we do. We have an A character here, 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 uh, and that's the last one. Now, which one of these do we care about the most? We care about the last A character the most because once we stop here, we know for sure that all of the A characters are in this portion of the string. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to create partitions where all A characters are gonna be here, not anywhere else in the string, not in any other partitions. So wouldn't it be convenient for us every time we see a character, if we could automatically know where the last index of that character happens to be? And maybe, just maybe, this character itself could be the last occurrence of A. This index could be the last position where A exists. Well, conveniently for us, we can do exactly that and we can create a hash map. So we can create a hash map just like this one where we take every single unique character in the input string and we map it to the last index that it occurs at. So for example, you can see the indexes are a little bit messy, but we can see that A ends at the last occurrence of A is at index eight. So we could map A to the, the character A to index eight. The last occurrence of B is gonna be at index five. Now I could do this for the entire string, but we have a ton of characters, so I don't wanna waste my time too much. But just assume that before we even start iterating through the array, we build a hash map just like this one. And the time complexity of building this hash map isn't gonna be bad because all we have to do is just iterate through the entire uh, string. So the time complexity and space, com the time complexity will be O of N. Technically, we're guaranteed that every character in here is just gonna be a lowercase uh, ABC character. 
So the memory complexity of this hash map is really going to be, uh, you know, big O of 26, so constant memory complexity, not too bad. Okay, now before we start iterating through the array, let's think about how we're gonna approach this algorithm. Remember, we are gonna have an output which is gonna tell us the size of each partition as you can see up above. So it would be helpful for us as we're iterating through this if we maintain the size of the current partition ourselves. Initially, we can set that to zero. And as we iterate through this, for example, we get to the first character, we see it's at index zero, but the last occurrence of A is at index eight. So we can keep track of another variable. Let's call it end. You could call it whatever you want, but end, which is gonna tell us uh, what's the end of our partition as far as we know so far right? Because we see the character A and we know it exists. The last occurrence of it is over here. So we assume, so far we're assuming that this is going to be a partition, but we don't know for sure just yet because we have some B characters here. It's possible that one of the Bs exists even farther than that. And if that's the case, then of course we have to update our ending. But in this case, that's not the case because the Bs are actually uh, within the first partition. So let's see this algorithm in action. Okay, so so far our size is zero, we get to the first character, our end is zero so far, but we know that A, the last occurrence of it is at this index, so we update our end to be index A. We get to the second character, B, the last occurrence of it is five. Five is less than eight, so we don't have to update our ending uh, just yet. And by the way, actually we'll, be, we'll have incremented our size, we'll have incremented to one after we iterate the B or the A character, and we'll have now uh, updated it to two after we have visited the B character. Again, we get to an A character, so we know that we don't have to update our end because the A's last occurrence is still here, but we can increment our size now to three. We see a B character, we've already seen it before. Okay, now we see a C character. We've already seen a B before, so we can go ahead and update the size to four. Now we see a C character for the first time. So where's the last occurrence of a C character? It's all the way over here at index seven. Of course, we're gonna get that from our hash map in constant time. Since it is a seven, we don't have to update our end again. So we are good to go, but we can increment our size now to five. Now we get to another B character. So no major updates here. We get to an A character again. We get to a C character again, no major updates, but at this point our size will actually be 8. Now we get to uh, the last A character, so now our size is actually 9, but what's special about this position? Well, this position, we're at the index where our end uh, value happens to be as well. So what that tells us is every character in this uh, partition only occurs in this partition. None of these characters are found anywhere to the right side. So that basically means we have finished our first partition and we wanna take the size and add it to the output. Good thing we're keeping track of the size. The first partition is of size nine. So we'll add it to the output. And then after that, we're gonna reset the size back to zero because starting from here, we're gonna be looking at a new partition. So our size is gonna be reset back to zero. Our end pointer can stay the same because we know as soon as we see the next character, our end pointer is going to be updated anyway, because we know that this is going to be a new character that we see. It's a D character. Where is the last index of D? Well, it's over here, which is 14. So that means we're going to update our end pointer because 14 is, of course, greater than 8. So end is now going to be 14. Of course, we are going to increment our size uh, now to 1. Okay, next character is E. Where's the last occurrence of E? It's over here, which is 15. So 15 is greater than our current end. So again, let's update our end value. And of course, let's update our size now to be two. Next character is F. Last occurrence of F is actually at this position. So 11 is lo uh, less than four, uh, 15, so no changes here. We see another E. We've already seen E's before. They're at index 15, which is what we have. No big deal. We see a G and G is, the last occurrence of G is actually at this position as well, which is 13, less than 15, so no updates. Uh, at this point, our size will actually be like five now, I think. Uh, next, let's get to D. 
this is the last occurrence of D, we get to E, this is the last occurrence of E, and it's exactly our end value. So this is the uh, second end of the second partition. And what's the size of this partition? Well, it's seven, which is what we're gonna be keeping track of, but I'm kind of skipping that. So the second uh, partition that we're gonna be adding to our output is gonna be of size seven. So that's what we're gonna do. Next, we're gonna go to the third partition. So over here, the first character is H. Uh, by the way, our size will have been reset to zero. And last occurrence of H is over here, which I think is 19. So that's what our end is gonna be at currently. Uh, we're gonna get to the second character, which is I. It's a little bit smushed in here. I's last occurrence is over here, actually at 22. So, uh, you know, update the end to 22. Next character, third character is gonna be J. Uh, last occurrence of J is actually at the end of the string, which is 23. So at this point, we pretty much know that this is gonna be a partition itself, right? But let's assume we continue to run through the algorithm. We basically visit all these characters. We don't really update our end because it's already at the last index of the entire string. And the size of this partition is what? It's something like eight characters. So by the end of it, our size will be at eight. And then we're gonna go ahead and add that to our output. So you can see we did the algorithm. We got the same output as they got in the example up above. And we kind of had to do two passes, one pass to build our hash map, and then one pass to actually build Build the output but still we all we had to do was scan through the input so the time complexity actually is just big O of n the memory complexity is big O of 1 because this hash map is going to be limited to 26 characters so with that being said I hope this makes sense now we can jump into the code remember the first thing we want to do is do a little bit of pre-processing uh, by that I mean building our hash map where we are going to be going ahead and mapping every character to the last index of it in the input string s. So let's go ahead and iterate through our string. In Python, we can uh, save like one line of code by uh, enumerating the string, which is basically gonna allow us to get to iterate through the index and the character at the same time. So i is the index, c is the character. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and take that character and set its last index equal to i. Now this is okay because even if the last uh, occurrence of that character isn't this index, eventually we will have visited the last occurrence of that character in the string and then we'll have updated the last index of that character to the last occurrence. So this is pretty simple. Now getting into the actual algorithm, we are gonna be doing the same thing. We're gonna be enumerating through the index and the character of every single uh, character in the string. Uh, but remember, we're gonna be maintaining a couple things. One is gonna be the result, of course, which is gonna tell us the size of each partition. And if we wanna you know, add the size, we have to maintain the size. And we're also gonna be maintaining the end of each partition. So initially these can just be set to zero. Now, as we go through every character, uh, as soon as we see a character, we wanna go ahead and increment the size of the partition. Uh, we also potentially wanna update the end of the partition if uh, the last index of this character is greater than the current end, then we can go ahead and update the current end to uh, that last index. You can write it out like an if statement like this, but to save a line of code, we can actually just use the max function, which is built into Python and most languages. We can update end to be the max of itself and the last index of the current character that we are visiting. So we can get rid of these two and just have this one line of code. Remember, the, we know we can stop a partition if we actually reach the end of the partition. So if i equals the end of the partition, then uh, we're done. We're gonna go ahead and add the size to the result and then we can go ahead and reset the size back down to zero. And that's all we really need to do as we finish our partition. We don't really have to reset the end because it's not really necessary in this case. Once this is done, uh, our result will have been built so we can go ahead and return it and then run this to make sure that the code works. And as you can see on the left, yes, it works. And it's about as efficient as we can get this problem to be. So I really hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel. And hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.